Hey guys, Pastor Tanner here. I want to do a quick video on the topic of deconstruction. This is something that may be very confusing to people. They don't understand about it. Some people are very positive about deconstruction. It changed their life. And then others are very negative. I've heard some people say, we had a different term for deconstruction in our day. It was called apostasy. What is deconstruction? I actually think understanding deconstruction can be very, very helpful in your personal faith journey. Now, the most helpful author when it comes to the topic of deconstruction is James Fowler. This is his seminal book, Stages of Faith. I want you to know this is decades old, right? His writings are from four or five decades ago. And I actually learned about James Fowler from Beyond the Fundamentals. Shout out to Beyond the Fundamentals. They really tipped me off to this author. And he is fantastic as far as I'm concerned. I don't buy into everything he says wholesale. But the fact of the matter is in a day and age when we are trying to get people to understand and adopt the Christian faith for themselves, understanding the stages that people often go through is very, very helpful. He's actually written a ton of different books, Trajectories of Faith, Faith Development and Pastoral Care. This little book is really, really good. Weaving the New Creation. We've also got Faithful Change and To See the Kingdom. Okay, James Fowler is an excellent author and his description of moving from what he calls stage three faith to stage four faith is deconstruction. Let me show you. So these are James Fowler's four stages of faith. You start out in stage one and you move to stage six over time. Now, I want you to know that the movement from stage three to stage four, this is what deconstruction is. Okay, and I'm not going to go into the other stages. You move from stage two to stage three, primarily through indoctrination, and then you move from stage three to stage four. This is deconstruction. And then finally, you move from stage four to stage five. Okay, and I want to describe these things because my contention is this deconstruction does not have to result in abandoning Christianity. Okay, I actually think you can deconstruct from within the Christian faith itself. I myself have gone through that process. I've gone from stage three to stage four within the Christian tradition itself. So you can be a firm believer the whole time and deconstruct your faith and piece it back together in a way that it becomes yours all while remaining a Christian. I want to encourage people to do this because I think it represents true Christian growth and discipleship. Now, what is stage three faith? Stage three faith is described by Fowler as synthetic conventional faith. He calls it a commitment to church and leaders. Okay. Stage three faith represents a more fundamentalistic approach to viewing the world. I have created a closed system with everything accounted for within the strict and rigorous categories that I have defined. Stage three faith is very stable because it tends to be more fundamentalistic. We we have defined the parameters that constitute the in-group and the out-group, and if I adhere to these parameters, I am in, and anything else that contradicts my perspective is in the out-group, and it's to be rejected. Okay, you don't have to be a Christian to have a stage three faith. Anyone who has a fundamentalistic view, a reductionistic view on the world is in stage three. As far as I'm concerned, I want you to know I'm kind of elaborating on James Fowler's ideas here. This is how I view things. Okay, but this is what it looks like. You create that closed system and it helps you to interpret the world through a specific lens. And what you end up doing is rejecting everything that doesn't fit within your closed system. This is actually a step that everybody needs to go through. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you've ever met anyone who is super dogmatic about their faith or their religion, they're very closed-minded, they're not very open-minded, and they believe they understand exactly how the world works and everything out there, you are interacting with somebody who is in stage three. And just recognize that's where they're at. There's nothing bad about it. Everybody needs to go through these stages. And stage three is something that everybody will fall into at some point. You may be in there a longer period or a shorter period, but... All of us have to go through this indoctrination, this embracing of a very closed system approach to the world, and then we'll come out of that. This is what it looked like for me when I first became a Christian. Started reading the Bible. I thought this made perfect sense of the world. I adopted my very narrow-minded, literalistic hermeneutic. I was a young earth creationist. I actually still am a young earth creationist, but I was going into all of those things, and I was just very dogmatic and closed-minded. This is what the scriptures say. Disagreeing with me is disagreeing with the Bible. That's disagreeing with God's word. This is 
classic stage three stuff. And so when people are deconstructing, they're actually abandoning this commitment to an external locus of authority. Okay, so you can see here on this graph, the synthetic conventional is described as conformity to a personal myth, identity, and set of values. This is why everyone has a testimony. Okay, this is why everybody has their explanation of how they came to faith and they saw the light. They were born again. All of this language is how you go from stage two to stage three. But stage three tends to be very stable. And because stage three is stable, it tends to ossify. People tend to actually get into their stage three faith. James Fowler actually explicitly says this. People can stay in stage three faith their entire lives because they create a closed system. Everything works from within that system and they can interpret all this other data as whether or not to accept it or to reject it. But here is the big difference between a stage three faith and a stage four faith. The locus of authority in a stage three faith is external, usually a church leader or a charismatic figure that they like to lean on favorite pastor favorite preacher believe and agree with everything they say they're amazing swallowing and eating up everything that they focus on that's stage three to a t and what is happening as you are moving from stage three to stage four is your locus of authority is no longer external to yourself but you are moving it now to be internal now, some people may think that I'm saying abandoning the Bible here. Not at all. You can continue to adhere to Sola Scriptura, Tota Scriptura, and all of these classic Christian doctrines while moving that locus of authority internally. What is it called? The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Christ actually himself does this. He tells us he's going to send his Holy Spirit and cause our locus of authority to come within. Not that I'm relying upon myself, but Christ in me to guide and direct my steps. And I understand Christ in me through God's word. You can actually begin to make this transition of deconstruction from firmly within the Christian tradition. And look right here. What is indigitative reflective faith? Taking of personal responsibility for beliefs, values, systems, of meanings and commitments. This is a good thing. I think it's a profoundly good thing because God is causing you to mature and to grow. You are understanding his word very well. You are understanding doctrine very well. You are understanding the place of theology very well. And you can begin to make decisions for yourself guided by the Holy Spirit in what is true and what is false, what is right, what is wrong, etc. God wants all of us to go through this process because it means that we are becoming like Christ. We are becoming responsible for the decisions we're making. Not always running to mom and dad to say, what is the right thing to do? What is the wrong thing to do? Not always running to a pastor or a preacher to tell us exactly how to live our lives because we don't know for ourselves, but instead recognizing that we have actually absorbed the truths of the scriptures within ourselves so that we can go out and navigate the world in a healthy way. I think this is a perfect step for us to take. And again, you don't have to leave the Christian faith in order to do it. But here's the problem. Because a lot of people equate their Christian faith with an external locus of authority, they think when they're moving on to a more personal faith, they have to abandon the Christian faith. It's not true. You can go through this entire process and beyond from within the Christian tradition. I've done it myself and I've seen others do it as well. So there you go. That's my take on deconstruction. It doesn't have to be apostasy. You don't have to leave the faith. It's not bad, but it's good done in the right context. You don't have to abandon Christianity in order to do it. Deconstruction represents you internalizing the truth within you. This is God's plan for each and every one of us. And I think it's absolutely essential for our growth and development. When I talk about in my video against fundamentalism, this is one of the things I'm talking about. This inability to recognize that I'm wearing glasses, I actually have a lens through which I'm viewing the world. When you go from stage three to stage four, you become self-aware. You become understanding of the glasses through which you're looking at the world. And that helps you to actually be more 
healthy. If you are struggling with your own personal faith, if you are struggling with Christianity and saying, I don't know if I believe this stuff anymore, I don't know, I want to still follow Jesus, but a lot of the claims of Christianity, I'm not really sure I agree with, I think you're probably knocking on the door of stage four, and I want you to know you can go through this entire process and remain a Christian. How can you do that? Guess what? The Christian faith is absolutely robust with a variety of opinions and ideas. The way I went through stage three, stage four, and into stage five was through an examination of the robust Christian tradition that's out there. Channels like 10 Minute Bible Hour help you to do this because they begin to examine the other foundations of the faith from different traditions. I recommend you begin reading outside of your tradition. You can still read within the Christian tradition, I have no problem with that, but you can begin to see that there's a variety of different perspectives and ideas regarding this. I recommend the writings of C.S. Lewis. I think he is super helpful when it comes to people moving from stage three to stage four. I also recommend digging into hermeneutics and apologetics and not just a strictly literal hermeneutic, but understanding a Christological hermeneutic and how we read the Old Testament in terms of the new. I think if you begin to read these things, you're going to see that the Christian faith is much more robust than you have given it credit for up until now. And if that is the case, then you might begin to see that you can remain Christian, but begin to adopt the Christian faith for yourself personally. This is a huge stage for you to embrace in your journey into Christ-likeness. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care. God bless. Bye.